One of the most valuable assets that we can create as designers is a database of all of our inspiration. The problem is though that inspiration can come from anywhere. So what happens is you have a little bit saved in Twitter, some in Instagram, then you have your whole dribble folder and one day you wake up and you realize you can't find anything. Well, that ends today because this video is a step-by-step -step walkthrough for how to create the ultimate design inspiration database in Notion. Let's dive in. When I'm ready to start exploring some new UI, or maybe I have a general idea of a certain pattern that I wanna use, the first thing that I will do is crack open my design inspiration database in Notion. This is something that I've been working on for years. It is ridiculously beneficial. And honestly, I don't know what I would do without it because no matter what I'm looking for, I have something that I can draw inspiration from, whether it's a specific interaction, maybe a unique layout, or even just a tasty hover state. This database is absolute gold and it's constantly giving me a little creative boost to kickstart my projects. So let's take a little peek under the hood so I can show you exactly how I set this up so you can make one of your own. Now, if you're not already using Notion, that's totally okay. A lot of the principles can apply to different tools. That being said, I'm super biased and I think Notion works incredibly well for this use case. So I'll provide a little link just in case you wanna get started. Now, the way that Notion works is everything really is a database. And so this design inspiration here is really just one big database. And I've updated the view here to use the gallery layout. And that's what provides the nice visual representation of everything that I'm saving. Now, if you hit Command N to create a new page in Notion, you'll see it gives you the gallery as one of the preset database options. And as soon as you do that, you are ready to start building out your database. Now, I don't have an existing data source here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new database, and then it will generate a few defaults for me, like so. Now the key to making this work is to think strategically about these properties and how you might want to filter them. Here's how I've set up the properties in my database. First things first, you'll notice I have a little description. And this is just a way to jog my memory as I'm scrolling through my gallery of cards. I like to have a little bit of text just to remind me why something is valuable and worth looking at. So in this example here, where I'm looking at this linear project updates, I really liked the way that they use transparency to add a little bit of emphasis on the shadows. And so it's a nice use of depth. And I could see myself using this for something like featured cards on a website, or maybe even a future logo. And so the description is really just a way to capture a little bit of info as to why this was inspiring in the moment. Now the next thing is the link. This is great, but I might want to look at the full breakdown of the page, see how it was used in context. So I always want to make sure that one of my properties is a URL. After that is the most important one of all, and that is your tags. So this is a complete breakdown of all of the tags that I use to categorize things. And what's cool is you can use multiple tags for each individual item. And I can even combine tags for some really granular filtering when I'm looking for a specific type of inspiration. Now, the last thing that I add is this little checkbox here. And all that does is allow me to set up a filter where I'm only showing unchecked items. And that way, if I've already used something or maybe it's just grown stale, I don't have to delete it. I can simply archive it like this and it will hide it from my gallery view. You can add properties one of two ways. First, you can hit this little more menu here, go into properties, and then this new property button right here will allow you to create something like a description, which is just text. Now, the other way to do that is to click on any individual item, and that's gonna open up all of the properties right here. So you can see this is the description that I just added. And I can start building out my list of properties using this button. So if I click add a property, the next thing that I'm gonna add is my tags. And I wanna make sure that it is a multi-select because I might have multiple tags per entry. So if I hit multi-select there, I can actually add some options right away, which is helpful because I know I'm gonna have things like card UI, for instance, and maybe web design, and perhaps a pricing page. 
And I might even have inspiration specifically for where I'm working. So in this case, I'll add something for Maven. And you don't have to nail every single category right away. You'll probably build it out over time as you realize what you need to look for. And maybe you have trouble categorizing something that really catches your eye. I started with probably 15 tags and now I'm probably closer to 50. So let's add a couple tags here so you can get a sense for what this looks like. Lastly, we're gonna add a property. We're gonna change the type to a checkbox and we'll just call this archive. And then finally, I wanna make sure to add my URL right here and I will call this website. All right, let's make a real example, shall we? So I'm gonna go ahead and use Raycast because I really like what they're doing and I'm gonna say great use of mockups plus dark mode. And I like how they use gradients. And web design feels pretty accurate. Mockups make sense. I'm also gonna create dark mode, which seems beneficial for the future. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my image like so. And then don't forget to add the URL. And we're good to go. Notion is then automatically going to take that content and display it as the cover photo. And this was actually a mistake that I made in the very beginning. And now I'm at the point where I honestly just can't undo it. So don't make the same mistake. When you're in this layout here, make sure that the card preview is set to page content and not page cover. Cause that's what I did. And I ended up having to use a ton of cover photos in order to populate my images. And it kind of sucks because I can't just paste them in. I have to actually upload them as a file. So definitely leave it as page content. One of my favorite things to do when I'm building out my database is to collect GIFs whenever motion is involved or hover states are happening because it's a really nice way to get more out of these previews. And honestly, it just makes browsing my database more fun. Now, when it comes to filtering your database, there are two ways you can go about that. One is if you just wanna quickly filter, click this button right here, and then you can pretty easily select whichever tag you wanna look at. So maybe it's web design, for instance. But if you want, you can get even more granular. By hitting this little more menu right here, you can go to an advanced filter. And so maybe I wanna look at web design that also is limited to dark mode. Now I can really get some specific inspiration that matches the use case that I'm looking for. If you go this route at any time, you can update these filters. Maybe you wanna remove this and switch to look at something more related to branding, for instance. Now this is all great, but what I find is I keep coming back to the same filter combinations over and over again. For instance, I wanna be one click away from looking at Maven specific inspiration at all times. In order to do that, you can set up what Notion calls views. And so you'll notice at the top here, I have Maven, website inspiration, mobile inspiration, and then I can actually click and go into other things like card UI, for instance. This is a really great way of creating some frequently used defaults so that you can quickly get to them in a single click. So if we head back to our example swipe file here, I can add a view like that by hitting this little plus right here, and then I can name it. So in this case, maybe I'm doing a lot of website work and I just want to call it web design. I select gallery. I can change any settings that I'd like. Maybe I want to look at large previews, for instance, and then I can hit done. And from here, now I'm just going to set up what my filters are for this view. So in this case, I just want to look at the tag is web design. And as soon as I do that, I have a dedicated view just for web design. And at any time I can switch back to my main view right here, which I will actually right click and rename as all. Hopefully by this point, you can get a sense for just how valuable this database can become over time. The best time to start investing in a setup like this is yesterday. And I hope that this video provides some actionable next steps. And if you ever find something that you really like, you should probably send it to me on Twitter too, at Ritteringand. That's all for now. Have fun building out your database.